Hi, today we're going to talk about timeline in a project finance model. So uh, many people ask me to kind of uh, start with the basics. So in the recent videos and blog posts that I prepared, I talked about some of the advanced financial modeling issues like the uh, term sheet negotiations issues, you know, that are related to term sheet negotiations and there are very important issues related to the financial model. However, there you are many to ask me if I can really start with the basics and uh, you are also many to ask me about what are the first thing that you need to build when you are building a financial model. And to answer this question, the answer is a timeline. And that's what I'm going to show you in this video tutorial. However, before we get into the subject, hi, my name is Herie. I made financial modeling my profession as well as my passion. My aim here is to make you a better financial model or simply better at financial modeling. So if that sounds like something you're interested in, please consider subscribing to my channel. Okay, so remember, what is the aim of a financial model? The financial model, especially a project finance model, the aim is to make future projections, right? So to making future projections, you need to know where you stand in terms of the timeline of your project. So let's go back and see what is the typical timeline of a project. So you have what we call a development stage, right? So that's where the project developer, the shareholders that they start the projects, they have an idea in mind. It all starts with an idea. So they have an idea in mind. They want to build a power plant. They want to build a, a, a train station, whatever you can imagine, right? That's it. So you start with an idea and you go for it right? So you go and you get the permits, you go and do the technical studies, you go and do all of the stuff. And that's the development stage. That's the most risky stage because you're just in the idea stage. Nothing is concrete yet. You didn't sign any of the contracts. So you're just running after your goal. Okay. So that's what we call a development stage. So you finish your development stage. That's when you have done all the hard work and you have secured your financing. And then you start with the construction construction phase. Construction phase is where you have already all the contracts set up. So you just build the project. So it's the bell building stage. Okay. And then lastly, when you finish the project is the construction is sorry, it's the operation phase. And so that's when you start generating your revenues that you when you start repaying your debts and until it goes until the end of the life of the project or life of your projections. Okay, so that's the typical life cycle of a project. So before we move on into the Excel, I just want to show you, you know, the book from uh, a person that I respect a lot and I learned a lot from. It's called Professor Yaskambe and his book is The Principles of Project Finance. So it's a Bible when it comes to project finance. So I really recommend this book to you. And in this slide that you see in front of you, he is just showing the different stages of a project finance transaction and I just love his sense of humor. Okay, so when it comes to timeline, um, there are the inputs that you need in your financial model. And this is like, um, so it's a little bit delicate. I will try to uh, kind of um, explain it to you. I'm not sure if I will be able, so I would give it a try. So that's something that you need to discuss, you know, about the timeline. That's something that you need to discuss upfront, whether you're working as a consultant, you discuss it with your client, with your team, whoever you're dealing with, you need to have this conversation upfront with them, meaning that you have to ask them about the timeline. How do you want me to build the model? Do you want me to, because we explained there are these different phases. There is a development phase, construction phase, and operation phase. So the first thing that you need to ask your clients is, how do you want me to build the model? Do you want me to start from development or should I start from construction? If I s start from construction, should I build the construction phase on monthly basis 
or do you want me to build it on quarterly basis how about the operation how do you want me to build the operation so these are the questions that you need to ask up front to your clients okay however before you ask them you need to make sure that you know exactly because you are the one who building it so you should have an answer of course you need to cross check with your client but you need to have the answer yourself okay so let me give you the answer from me so the um, first question do i need to include development phase in my model the answer is yes okay yes but um yes and no <laughs> let's say like this the answer is yes and no so you build the development phase you definitely need to dev build start your model from development if you are um, building it from a developer's point of view i don't know if that's clear or not i don't know if that makes sense or not but uh, yes so if you are building it from a development company of course you need to start from development so you need to track all the expenses during the development phase and then you need to reflect the remuneration in the financial close if not then if you are not dealing with the developer and it's just a project that is buying the uh, buying the basically permits and the rights and the shares at financial close from developer then you will say that it's okay to build it to build a model or start the model from construction start date or financial close okay so these are the things that you need to ask the second question is how do you want to the periodicity of your projections so as i said this is the question that you need to ask your team however the answer is uh, during construction, you definitely want to consider building your model on a monthly basis. Remember, it's a very delicate phase for a project finance deal, the construction phase. You have no revenues, you have no cash inflows, it's all costs. So you need to go to the banks and you ask them, listen, I need to pay this much to my contractor. I need to pay this much to my insurance provider. And I have this SPV cost because you have already established your SPV at that time. So you need to go and ask for money for, uh, from your shareholders and from your lenders. So they've got to monitor it on a monthly basis for sure. You know, that's something that needs to be monitored on monthly basis i'm talking about the construction phase so i would recommend my personal recommendation is to build your model during construction on monthly basis however when it comes to operation this is something that needs to reflect the periodicity of your debt repayments okay so let me be more clear so you go to your banks, you go to your lenders and you ask them for money. They give you the money and they're in construction. And after some period of time, which is called grace period, they ask you to repay the money at an interest, of course. Right. So they need to they ask you to repay the money and they're going to tell you that you need to repay repay me back on semi annual basis or on quarterly basis. I mean, it's rarely that they ask on monthly basis, but so you see what I mean? So when you are uh, making your model, you need to make sure that your operation reflects the periodicity of the debt service repayment. So you need to go and check in the loan agreements and see what is the requirement from the lenders. Do they ask you to repay the loan on quarterly basis? Then you need to make your projections on quarterly basis. Do they ask you to uh, pay your debt on semi-annual basis? Then you need to make your projections, operational projections on semi-annual basis. So that's the thing that you need to kind of make sure that is, that's the information that you need to have when you're building your model. Okay, so I told you that you need to ask the question about uh, how you need to make your projections, right? However, please listen to me. No matter what the answer is, you need to build the flexibility in your financial model so that if tomorrow they tell you that, oh, by the way, we want to have the uh, um, cooperation on quarterly basis rather than semi-annual, we want to project the um, drawdowns on some, so what you need to build that flexibility in your models, okay? So no matter what the answer, you're gonna basically 
provide flexibility, especially when it comes to timeline. I mean, I would recommend flexibility in anything, <laughs> but especially when it comes to timeline, you need to make sure, make sure that your model is flexible so you can change things you know the timeline financial close date they tell you that oh listen we have everything ready we're gonna close it in one month of course yes sure everybody is waiting for that but you need to make sure that if they come up and say oh by the way we, we cannot make it you know by this date we need to have a two or three months buffer you just need to just you know, just change the input and the whole model will need to be kind of flexible and, you know, reflect the change. So that's something that I really want to emphasize today is flexibility when it comes to timeline. OK, so no matter what is the base case that you are um, basically showing today, you need to have flexibility in changing whatever is related to the timeline of your project. Okay, now let's get into the financial model and let's do some Excel work. So, in your financial model, you know, one of the uh, standards is to separate inputs from calculations. So, you most probably have a worksheet or a section in your Excel sheet that is dedicated to your inputs. Within those different sections of your inputs, you have one section dedicated to timeline, okay? So, as you can see here, for example, in this model, uh, it is actually a template that is available on Eloquence. You can just download it for free. So that's what I'm showing you, showing you today. So this is the model that I want to reflect the uh, development start date. Okay. And then I uh, include how long the development is taking place for 12 months. And then once I'm done with that, I will reach my um, financial close. So for example, if I want to kind of update it to maybe like something like today, okay, let's say that it's a project that started this year, then I expect 12 months for um, development. And then I expect a financial close in January 2020. Okay, then I would say once I close it, and then this is the next input that I need. The next input is the construction start date. Okay, so if they tell you that, listen, we don't need the development phase, so you omit this one, this one all is you can just delete, and you start with construction start date or financial close date, let's say from this one. Okay, so as you said, that's a com um, conversation that you need to have up front. So um, if not, so that's the important date, construction start date, that's basically you start drawing down on your debt and equity on your financing instruments. So after your financial close date, financial close date is when you sign all your agreements and you have to pay, pay all your commitment fees and all your front end fees. And so that's the basically start date with your financiers. Okay. And construction start date, that's when you start the actual construction works. Okay. So these are the inputs that you need to reflect in your input sheet. Once you have these inputs, which are basically construction start date, duration of construction, and then you need the duration of your operation. Okay. Once you have this information, you need to basically what we say is that all these um, assumptions you need to be able you you will have to provide the flexibility to your user to change this you see the blue font ones they need to be able to change it and the whole model meaning the whole revenue calculations the whole opex capex everything needs to kind of adjust to these changes okay so once you have done that, you have reflect. So that's the first step. The first step is to come and define your timing assumptions in your inputs. Okay. The second is to build some what we call timing flags and counters. Okay. So in this one, I have a dedicated sheet, which I call timing. You can call it whatever you want. So that's where I include all the flags. Okay, so now in that, uh, I'm on that worksheet, which I call timing, and that's where I do the calculations of, for all the uh, timing flags and counters. And the aim and the purpose of this worksheet is to come up with this timeline that you see here, which is the beginning period. So as you can see here, I, as, I, as I said in my input, I want the model to start in January. And I want the um, uh, I want the model to be on monthly basis 
up to basically operation started which is january 2023 and then after that i want to switch to semi-annual basis and as you can see here just look at the timeline you can see that okay this is all on monthly basis you see all monthly basis as soon as i switch to january 2023 it's going to switch to semi-annual basis so it's doing exactly what i just instructed it to do meaning that's here okay so if i put this to 12 and i put this to 6 just to be an example you go well, let's go back and you see that you see this is on semi-annual basis as soon as i i i uh, just hit the operation it's going to go back to operation okay and uh, everything else is going to adjust accordingly based on these inputs that i have defined here okay and building it is very easy so i have a template in the eloquence channel i'm going to put the put it in the description down below please just go and download it it's very straightforward i just recommend that you just download it and just maybe build it from scratch if you don't want to borrow you can just of course use it directly but that if you really want to learn i just tell you that just get inspired by it and build your own timeline you know based on what you desire but get inspired by the formula I use of course as you know in excel there are a thousand ways of do the same doing the same thing so you might come up with an even better way of doing what i did in the template but this is just the suggestions I have to build the different flags. So as you can see, we have a financial close date. We have the construction start date. And then we have the number of days in the construction phase. These are all flexible, meaning that they will all change based on what I define here. Look at this one. If I go to timing, you see that this is, you see, 365 days construction. And we have 365 days you know, in the first operation and then the operation continues up to, you know, how many, I don't know how many years I have. I have 19 years of operation. Okay. So as you can see, this is just a way of building flexibility in your models when it comes to timeline. I will let you explore the templates. It's also, I mean, as I say, it's free to download and let me know what you think about it. And um, if you want, this discussion can go on and on about timeline. It's a simple discussion. It's a simple topic, but there are so many things that are included in it. So if you want to kind of, if you have any questions or anything that you want me to expand on, let me know and I can make a second video. And uh, if there is anything else that you might be interested in, please let me know and I can make a video tutorial and a blog post and uh, all right so thank you and I hope to see you in my next video bye if you want to learn how to build better financial models check out my online course on financial model spreadsheet design at courses.phoenixmode.com